our company last year raised uh, more than $60 million uh, through what we call a private placement. So technically we use blockchain, we use cryptocurrency to raise money through a, a group of investors all over the world, mainly in Japan, in, uh, in Asia and especially Japan actually. We did have actually, uh, we, we did have like a sort of a, a oversubscription uh, because what happened is it took us three months to raise 30 million and then we announced a partnership with Binance, which is the biggest crypto exchange in the world and who has the most powerful brand equity right now in the market. And once we announced this, in three days we raised the $30 million. This money has a cost, uh, meaning that when you acquire this, there is a lot of intermediary, so it's not that we had eventually $60 million in our bank accounts. First of all, it was cryptocurrency, so it went up and down, down a lot. So it's very funny to lose a lot of money, it's very painful, and then it went up a little bit. We have a good product, we have a good narrative, we have background, but yet, uh, it, it was in this, um, uh, super hyped on uh, time where everybody wanted to be involved in a cryptocurrency, uh, everybody wanted to be involved in that space and um, yes, we raise a lot of money which now give us the runway and give us the power to deliver the product that uh, we want to launch. We are just delivering the product that we are committed to. So last year we said uh, that we were going to launch a mobile app with some of the biggest teams and that's what we are doing. So that's what is happening this summer. On the top of that, we went a little bit further. Because we are based in Malta, because we are based in a, a regulated environment, we decided to reinvest part of our uh, resources in the local ecosystem. When I started to work in the blockchain space and crypto space, it was at the same time, same time that Malta started to regulate and launch their um, regulatory framework. So I've been lucky to be on the side because I was not part of this, that's not my job, but I was uh, listening, I was interacting as well with the government to share our ideas. We were part of the consultation uh, process, of course. And what was fascinating is to see how a country which actually a government and, and, and people in the government understood, blo understood blockchain, understood cryptocurrency, and understood how they can position themselves in the global map uh, in that space. They, they succeed this uh, pure um, buzz about it, but after the pure buzz, you need to succeed in um, bringing companies and delivering the dream that you sold. And, and I think that right now it's happening. You have thousands of companies, hundreds of companies that set up shop here. We are part of that ecosystem uh, as a foreign company based in Malta. Every country has their pro and cons. And in Malta, as much as I love the country, of course there are things that uh, I would prefer this to be different. Uh, the, the irony is Malta is growing so fast that there is more cranes in the country than there is trees, period. And that's true. And it's painful. but. Again, that's the price to pay when you live in a country that is growing. Malta has a very low unemployment, unemployment rate, which is great, but it's very bad as well because it's very difficult to hire. So you need to import uh, talent from either Europe or other countries. Difficulties is banking. Uh, country has 500,000 people and has industries that are very risky for banks. Therefore, it's difficult to balance. Uh, if in France you have 65 million individuals, it's much easier to accept risky businesses when you're a bank because you, you can balance it against uh, 65 million retail customers. Here you cannot. That's why Malta is also trying to partner with uh, international banks, inter international companies, international countries. 